Today we're talking to Bebe on talent and we're going to go straight into our first question on talent and talent management. I mean, the first thing is that we don't know what we don't know. I mean, what we do know is that the world of work is probably going to be radically different. Sure. Um, and, and so the first thing that, that we think about in the talent space is um, how do we build two things, resilience and, and agility, right. um, because they go hand in hand. So there's been so much change already, but possibly there'll be much more change um, in the way that work is designed, in the way that organizations are designed to, to, to service that work, and in the way that we contract with people. People. Yeah. Um, um, at the moment, um, especially on, on the continent, we're still very traditional about um, ways of working, about um, remuneration for work and things like that. Um, I had the opportunity, I think it was last year, through um, um, a program that, that um, um, a university and, and some consulting firm did to be um, engaged with young millennials, you mm -hmm. know, like really young, bright people from um, across uh, South African universities. And the first thing that just um, occurred to me is that we're we're not possibly speaking the same language, <laughs> you know. But of course we're not. We're not. Um, <laughs> and so there's a huge, and so that's one truth. And then you step back and you, you think about Brexit mm. um, and you think about the implication of older people voting um, a certain path for younger people. Yep. And it makes you very kind of, um, it makes me as a talent manager very kind of aware of the limits of my competence yeah. when it comes to what work will look like in 2030. Sure. And so um, I don't think that I do my work thinking about 2030 as a goal, mm. um, but I do do my work thinking about how can we make organizations flexible, mm -hmm. adaptive, mm -hmm. resilient, mm -hmm. and also how do we um, um, build in reflexive thinking? Right. So thinking about how we think. Yeah. So not just sort of binary um, A equals B, mm -hmm. but um, a questioning mm -hmm. and, and going beyond. So thinking and questioning and, ch and being um, courageous enough to challenge our models. It's not easy um, because um, <laughs> the economy is tight yep. and people need to make money now. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the, the pieces I think that when, when HR is done um, in service um, of, of the company in a very courageous way, that's the kind of thing we should be doing is we should be holding those two spaces. We should be holding how, how do we make people ready um, and able to deliver value today, Fabulous. but also where um, there's the energy within the organization. How do we start shifting mm. towards the new? Mm. And um, it can be very radical and it can be very, very simple. It can be as simple as starting to think differently about how work is done. Mm. So, you know, the whole um, clocking from nine to five. If you're not operating a machine or you're not needing to be on a phone, and even if you're on a phone, do you have to be in a location? It's a 1960s so, thing. But oh, but, it's alive. <laughs> but, but it's alive. But it's alive. It is alive. Sure. I mean, you're you're clocking biometrics today. It's alive, and uh, so the very uh, just as simple as um, getting the organisation to think about flexibility, yeah. and not flexibility because women are mothers. Because for some reason we've we've created this flexibility ghetto mm. in the in the talent management space where um, we need agile working because women are mothers and they 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 need to um, you know sort of exit off ramp and on ramp so to speak very true but that's not the only reason mm. um, so how do we create flexibility so that people can work from home reduce costs have less um, office space that we need to mm. to manage and all those things um, how do we create performance management systems that keep people accountable when they're not in the space Space. Sure. Because if as a manager, you only know how to manage people who are s s seated at a desk, mm. um, it becomes a problem when that model shifts. So it's um, making managers or capacitating, if you like, leaders and managers, and also capacitating the system. Um, again, simple things like the way we contract for work yeah. and how we think about HR contracts. Um, some companies still determine what kind of reward people should get. And one of the things we will need to, to shift to as, an, as, as a move towards 2030 is total reward. Look, you work for me, I give you some money, whatever you want to do with it within the bounds of the law, 
is your concern you know so we move away from prescribing how much you spend on medical aid how much you spend on a car you know it's it's insane in yep. in 2016 to be that paternalistic towards adults mm -hmm. um because what we then do is people check out of the responsibility for managing their careers and it creates a, um, a challenge in the talent space because we say your career is your own yeah but you know not quite, not quite. <laughs> i think the biggest shifts to be honest um, in preparation is readying managers, yeah. readying the system, um, and readying employees themselves. So for, for, for employees, it's uh, especially, like you say, the Gen Xs, Gen Ys, um, to, to um, be okay with autonomy. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that generation, unless they've probably been very conscious about it for themselves, are not okay with uh, uh, giving or uh, letting go. Yeah. Of, 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 of control. Mm -hmm. So getting employees um, okay with autonomy, getting managers okay with autonomy, getting the system to think about change, not as a, um, a negative force coming against them, but as a natural occurrence in life. Yeah. And, then, and then what we do is, is think, navigate. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about leadership development, it's not your old... Um, um, sort of um, assertiveness, though that is still relevant, or even worse, your sort of management two by two. It really is about giving people the sense-making tools. And I think that's the shift, is from telling people how to do and what to do, to helping um, people have the skills to sense-make. We haven't equipped people for this. Yeah. We haven't equipped people to, to hold ambiguity and not lose themselves, yeah. you know? Is, yeah, you know, actually, this is not going to change, and this is not going to be resolved but you still have to do all this other stuff and so it's moving away from this I get it I don't get it binary or I like it I don't like it too it doesn't matter whether I get it or not it's happening. it's happening and so I have to deal with it I have to respond to it I have to react to it and then I have to move beyond whatever that beyond is it's not always a linear beyond it might just be an expansion mm -hmm.